All right, I've got a beautiful slab of acacia here. Uh, this is a friend of mine. He asked me to get it ready for him. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to show you how I get one of these slabs that's full of cracks and voids and things. How do I get this ready for a project? Stick around, let's get started. Okay, some of the tools that you're going to need is some sort of tape. Tyvex tape is really good, it's really sticky. You could use regular packing tape, but I don't think it's quite as sticky enough. Um, but this Tyvex tape, duct tape, uh, um, I think it's called duct tape, something like that, that works great. So this is what I always use is the Tyvex. Uh, so I'm gonna use that to cover the back of the slab so the resin doesn't escape. Uh, I've got a razor blade here that's gonna go into all of these cracks and get them cleaned out and make sure that I've got good flow of resin. And then I've got various picks here. And these picks are gonna help me get in and get rid of any dead wood or any of the pith or anything because you wanna make sure that you get down to uh, good uh, solid wood and it's not gonna chip away um, later on down the road with the resin. So you see all of this stuff here, gotta get all of that out of here. Alrighty, so this is the back side of it. Uh, there's quite a few cracks or openings on this side. Um, you wanna seal those up because what'll happen is, is you'll pour resin from the other side and resin will always find a way to escape. So it's important that you tape up all the possible escape routes. So um, I'm getting low on my tape. If I am more, I would just do the whole thing, but I'm gonna do the points where I see and then I'll put some on the ends here and that should be all that we need to do before we start the pour. All right, I ran out of Tyvex tape, so hopefully this sticks. Alrighty, now that I've got it all taped up, I've got some on the sides here, on the ends, underneath. Now I just want to make sure that it's level. Uh, and I do that because I want to, the resin not to flow down to one end. I want it to be, you know, just a, a, a flat surface. So just going to, it's pretty dang close. Maybe just up a smidge, put some of these, these little uh, handy shims, not sponsored, but uh, these are great. I'll put links to these down in the description. Use them all the time. All right, that's pretty good. Um, and then I mess my tape up a little bit, but it's okay. So it needs to be raised up in the front a little bit. Mm. 
All right. I think we're close enough. Okay. So what we're going to be using today is some uh, Lumalite deep pour. So it gives us a working time of 60 to 90 minutes, tack free time of uh, up to 72 hours, and it takes five to seven days to cure. But here in Arizona, it usually took about, I think it was two days when I did the headboard. So that's what I'm gonna use for resin. And then for color, uh, my friend and his family chose this eye candy penny copper. It's a really, really nice color. So it'll pick up some of the, um, I don't know, what's that, gold? I don't know, orange, whatever it is, copper. Um, it'll pick up a lot of those tones in here. So I think it was a really good choice. So you mix this up, not by weight, but by uh, volume. So we're going to go to two to one. And I'm just going to do enough to do this middle pour here. I'll come back and do a smaller portion on the cracks itself. So this is the, you know, the resin itself or the epoxy, I should say. Find my two to one here. All right, and I'm going to pour to the two line. Okay, and then you always want to make sure uh, that you wipe the lids off here or the spouts. Um, if you don't, especially with the hardener, you'll come back and find you can't open up the bottle. So that one's that, okay? So don't get them mixed up. One rag for each. So now we're going to go to the four line with the hardener. Okay. Don't worry about the color, it'll be okay. It's, uh, since I'm putting that copper color in there, it'll, it'll be fine but I think this is probably getting close to its end of life. I need to use it up. It's usually good for about a year. So now you just want to stir it. Make sure that you scrape the bottom, scrape the sides. And that's, that's all it is to it. So I'll come back here in a moment when I got the, the color added. Okay, so that's good. So a lot of people ask kind of, when do you know that you've stirred it long enough? Um, I do it where I don't see the swirls of the two different types, the hardener and the, and the epoxy. As soon as I don't see any of those streaks, you know, I know that it's, it's, it's done. And that's one of the reasons why I don't put in the color until I've mixed them all together. These are really nice. So, all right, let's just add, oh, that fan is blowing us away. Let's try, let's try that and see what it looks like. And another good way to tell, do I have enough color or, or whatever, is coat the back of your mixing utensil and see how thick that is. And I think I'm gonna go a little bit more. Maybe two. Maybe just a little bit more, and that should do it. Alrighty. I don't know if this is gonna be enough for this cavity. Um, I did a log the other day, and it took up more, way more than I thought it was. All right, I think that's good. Okay. Get this cleaned off. Okay, two more. Thank you. 
right, we're going to leave it sit. Pump a little bit of bubbles as they come up. And I'll just keep an eye on this. Got some other projects going on in the shop, so I'll just uh, check back on it. All righty, uh, it's been a little bit longer, and this is uh, fully cured, so time to get it pushed through the old uh, drum sander here. It's just a little too wide for my uh, planer, so we're going to get this and take it down. It is a little bit wobbly, so I'm going to look at it. Maybe I have to use a sled, but I'll get to that in just a second. All right, so to get this perfectly flat, what I've done is I've just got my little uh, angle finder that I use for my table saw when I'm doing like 90 or 45 degrees. So uh, all you do is you set it on, I'll just set it on this surface that I know this is the surface that I want to be flat. I uh, simply just turn it on. Actually, I need to go this way and zero it, okay. So then what I can do is put it in a spot where there's no resin. Actually, I probably should be in the middle. I'll take that back. So, because that's where I want to see it, because that's high, so it wouldn't be, that's the spot you need. So, like, right there is kind of where it's level uh, in the middle. So that's what I'm going to go with. And now I'm just going to take some of these handy shims. So we're, here they are and uh, hot glue these on and uh, that'll stabilize it and then I should be able to just put it in the uh, through the um, sander <laughs> drum sander sorry okay so now we're just going to apply a little bit of glue to the top connection and then try to get down in here and hold on to it well and then here, oh, well, you can't see. Let's see if we can swing you around. Okay, something like that. So here, I'm gonna put a little bit here just to hold on to it. Anywhere that it's kind of making connection with the uh, wood, just to keep make sure it doesn't move. Alrighty, so we are going to grab this one here. And, well, oh, that glue is hot. Go figure. Who would have thought that glue would be that hot? <laughs> Alrighty, a little bit more here. Let's get some down here at the end. Basically, you just want to put enough so that you're not going to, it's not gonna move on you. So then I just wanna fill in some space. Try not to get it to move, okay. A little bit there, a little bit here, okay. And we'll give that just a minute to cool down and then I'll get the uh, drum sander set up and we'll get this thing sanded. The other thing you want to do before you send it through the drum sander is you want to figure out kind of where's your high side because what you don't want to do is say this is your low side, uh, set it to that and then come to find out this is so much thicker that it gets bogged. So what I just do is just uh, put this on there and I know this was the high spot because I just did it, but you basically you set it there, come here, and if you find a new high spot, then you know you just go with that. All right. So just right at three inches, and it should barely fit through here.
Almighty of God it off of the sled. And now it's time to uh, hit this uh, underneath side. And this is a pretty big hump here. So it would take a while to go through the, uh, the, the sander, the drum sander. So I'm just gonna knock it down to flush with this. And then I'll put it through the drum sander so that it just, it's a little quicker. All right, so this is gonna be a pretty dusty job. So I do have my uh, mask. I've got my hearing protection and I'm going to turn on my air filters to uh, probably crack the garage door just to let some of this dust get out of here. All right, so it's been a little bit since I uh, recorded this video. Uh, life has been crazy. Uh, so I just wanted to wrap it up. Uh, I'm about to put a, an epoxy coating on it. Uh, that's what uh, my friend wanted me to do uh, to it. I'm not gonna record that. Uh, you've seen me kind of do those things. If that is something that you wanna see, uh, drop me a comment down below and, and let me know if you, it's something that you wanna see. Um, but anyway, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you know, this is just one way that you can get these slides labs ready. Um, it's the way I choose. It works for me. Um, but yeah, I, hopefully you, you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, give it that thumbs up, drop a comment. All those great things help the channel out. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to do it. And until next time, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.